I'm Andy Rossmeisel from Brighter Planet. Um, and just a quick warning right off the bat, this isn't a presentation about climate change, but I will touch on climate change, which can be a very depressing topic for a lot of us and something we deal with every day at Brighter Planet. We've come up with a really novel way of dealing with this problem. It's, uh, it's called boozing. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have Robbie, my colleague back there, who's going to hand out emergency tequila shots, anybody who's feeling uh, overwhelmed by what I'm going to talk about. But no, seriously, I'm, I'm here to talk about big data, as we all are, and the way that we think about big data at Brighter Planet is in terms of uh, magic swords. So we think that every technology and company here basically has a magic sword with uh, big data. So we know basically what it is, we know what it does, we know some sense of, of how it works, but we're left with an impression that there's a little bit more than meets the eye. We have our own uh, magic sword of Brighter Planet. We're a computational sustainability platform, so we do lots of scientific calculations. And this particularly comes with its own degree of risk as a magic sword. I'm referring to uh, an incident that happened a few years back called Climate Gate, where basically there were a bunch of hackers that hacked into a, an email server uh, at a climate research facility uh, in England. And they stole some emails that some climate scientists were writing that made it basically look if you read it in the wrong light, like they were fudging the numbers. Um, they weren't doing this, obviously, but uh, our friends at places like Fox News really latched onto this concept. These climate scientists were the new villains. We could all sort of uh, start to hate them, um, and, uh, and so a lot of people did. Now, obviously, these climate scientists uh, were not in the wrong. Uh, there have been actually uh, three uh, independent reports that have been released that, uh, where they actually went through all these emails and determined that no, all, all of these climate scientists were totally in the right. Uh, if anything, their emails were probably just a little bit misinterpreted by the folks uh, at Fox News. Um, but uh, th nevertheless, there was some damage done, and that uh, <clears throat> you know, sort of villainy spread from a few climate scientists in England to really the whole field of climate science, where everybody was starting to come under, uh, under fire for what these few scientists had actually not done. Uh, actually, it spread to the whole movement. This is our good friend, fearless leader, Al Gore. Um, actually, somehow Lady Gaga ended up in the church choir. I'm not exactly certain how that happened. Um, anyway, it's kind of funny, but it's also a little bit tragic um, because it had a really big effect. Um, so before and after Climate Gate, look at the number of people who were extremely sure that global warming was real. And that number actually got cut in half uh, by Climate Gate. So uh, it's, uh, it, it's not something really to laugh about. This little mistake had a pretty big impact. And the reason we think that that is the case at Brighter Planet is because in the past, climate science has been kind of shrouded in secrecy. Uh, there's, you know, scientists working in, some would say, in an ivory tower. They have these models and methodologies that are somewhat secret. Um, and so they were relying on all of our trust. And our philosophy of Brighter Planet is trust is a little bit scary. Um, so we'd rather operate our company in a way where we're relying less on trust uh, and more on uh, transparency with our own special brand and magic sword. So a few ways we do this. One, we use a lot of data at Brighter Planet like all you guys do. We pull a lot of our data from authoritative sources uh, like the government. Um, and we're actually showing exactly where those uh, data are coming from, how we're transforming them, how we're uh, correcting them, and so they can get sent downstream to our computations. The computations themselves all have dynamic methodology. It can be a little bit hard to explain, so we actually create methodology documents for all of our computations that show exactly how the magic is working um, with all of our computations. And finally, for our more technical audience, we've actually done a really selective uh, release of source code. So uh, not the whole system, but the little parts of the source code that are methodological, we actually have released as open source so people can see exactly what's going on. Um, so examples of Magic Swords and other big data companies. Uh, one is uh, Amazon. You guys have seen these Amazon recommendation fails here. Somebody bought a programming book and was recommended a live at home full time motherhood book uh, after that for some reason. Obviously, this is a mistake of their magic sword. Uh, Amazon's actually gotten a lot better recently. They've uh, started to be much more transparent about their magic sword here, and they show you uh, exactly you know, why they're recommending something. And if they got it wrong even then, there's actually even a link to, to fix it. A company that's done this really well from the very beginning actually is uh, Netflix. So whenever you go to Netflix to recommend any of these movies, Netflix has always been very upfront and said, we're recommending this movie because you really like these other two movies. It'll show you the classification uh, of those movies so that you can uh, you know, basically understand even deeper uh, why, why those were recommended. So the moral of the story is um, 
basically we all have our magic swords and what we do. And there may be opportunities to look for and keep an eye out for when we can kind of lift up the curtain a little bit and say, okay, here's actually a little bit more about how the magic is done. Um, so that when you are struck with an unexe unexpected uh, circumstance, something goes wrong, you can be a little bit more resilient on it. So thank you.